Good morning. Thank you for watching. I appreciate y'all's prayers last week. That must have worked because we got an inch and four tenths of rain. That's the first rain we've had in a long time. Uh, hope we get some more. But uh, thank you for watching. Uh, this morning we're going to have a uh, lesson. It's kind of a sermon in reverse, as you might think. Uh, we're going to be going over uh, the devil's beatitudes. We're going to be talking about what the devil wants you to do. Uh, the first one is called, uh, this was an article from uh, Truth in Love. And it's called the, De the Devil's Beatitudes. Blessed are those who are too tired, too busy, too distracted to spend an hour or two once a week with their fellow Christians. They are my best workers. Blessed are the Christians who wait to be asked and expect to be thanked. I can use them. Blessed are the touchy. With a bit of luck, they may stop going to church. They are my missionaries. Blessed are the complainers. I am all ears with them. Blessed are those who are bored with the preacher's mannerisms and mistakes, for they are nothing, uh, for they get nothing out of the lessons. Blessed is the church member who expects to be invited to his own congregation, for his part of the pro for he is part of the problem instead of the solution. Blessed are those who gossip, for they shall cause strife and divisions that please me. Blessed are they who are easily offended, for they will soon get angry and quit. Blessed are they who do uh, not give an offering to carry on God's work, for they are my helpers. Blessed is he who professes to love God, but hates his brother or sister, for he shall be with me forever. And remember now, that's the devil's beatitudes. So, here is a, I've got another article here uh, that's, uh, is six things the devil wants for your life. Number one, he wants you to doubt God. In John 20, the disciples shouted, that they had seen Jesus raised from the grave, but Thomas kept uh, uh, kept doubt in his heart. Uh, and Jesus appeared to he, Thomas and said, Stop doubting and believe. When the devil tempts you to doubt God, don't let your circumstance determine your God. Let God determine your circumstance. Number two, he wants you to live in fear. Fear is not the absence of faith, it is the misplacement of it. The devil doesn't want to rob us of our faith. He wants our faith to be in anything but God. Life in Christ is life not in fear. Uh, in Psalms 34 verse 4 says, I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. And the third thing. He wants you to feel insecure. Don't let the devil tell you that you are unloved and not good enough. You are God's handiwork. And in Christ, we are not only good enough, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. That's Ephesians 2.10 and Romans 8.37. Number four, to avoid church. The more involved you become in the body of Christ, the harder it is to preserve your it the harder it is to preserve your faith. It is it isn't easy to follow Christ in a world that doesn't. When we leave the community we were made for, we are designated to be devoured. And that's first Corinthians twelve. He wants you to be led astray. Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves, Matthew 7, 15. When we rely on the words of men ourselves in the place of God's word, 
we can lead others astray from Jesus and be led astray from the truth. Number six, he wants you to fail. The devil wants to destroy us. He wants us to settle for what the world has given us and accept our lots. In 2 Corinthians 4, 8 through 10 says, We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. When you feel like you're going to lose, take heart. Jesus already won for you. Don't be devoured. Stop doubting and believe. John 20, verse 27. Satan is amongst us. Peter tells us that Satan is like a roaring lion. He seeks to devour us. And uh, every day that we go through our lives, we are faced with situations where we can either go one way or the other. And uh, I remember uh, back whenever I was baptized, uh, we had a, uh, a sermon that was, uh, it was either that you were in God's camp or you were in Satan's camp. One of the, you working for one or the other. And uh, no matter where you are in your life, uh, you're working for either God or you're working for Satan. There's no doubt about it. Uh, and Satan wants you to work for him. He wants you to do the things that you know that you shouldn't do. Uh, God, on the other hand, he wants us to stay pure. He wants us that, to do the, do the right things. If we do the right things, uh, God will be pleased. But if we do the wrong things, we always have an advocate, and that advocate is Jesus Christ. Uh, we can repent of our sins, and, and we're not perfect. Uh, Christians are not perfect. If anybody tells you that they're perfect and they don't do any wrong, you better get away from that person because he's going to get struck by lightning. It ain't going to happen. That, that, nobody is perfect uh, except Jesus Christ. And he's the one that's going to be our advocate. He's the one that's going to go to God and, and tell God that, you know, that this was a Christian and he was a good man. And he didn't do anything. Uh, he didn't do perfect, but... Uh, he did what he could. He did the best that he could. And that's what I want to hear. Uh, you know, uh, when we go through our life, we've got to maintain our hold on God. And I heard a thing the other day about Winston Churchill. And he was uh, the prime minister of Great Britain, you know, when World War II was going on. Man, he had a tough, he had a tough deal. Uh, I think they said they had like 57 nights of solid bombing. That was like having a 9-11 57 days in a row. And, and the Nazis just kept on, you know, trying to get them to uh, give up. And uh, uh, Winston Churchill, if you've seen it, ever seen a picture of him, he kind of looks like a bulldog. But he told uh, a bunch of uh, uh, reporters one day, he said, do you know why the face of a bulldog is slanted back? He said, it's cause he can, that bulldog can grab a hold of something and he can keep breathing while he's got a hold of it. He ain't gonna let go. And that's the way we gotta be. When we go through our lives, we've got to grab a hold of Jesus and we gotta, we gotta keep a hold on him. And, and we got to still breathe, you know. We got to do our everyday lives, but we got to have Jesus in our life. We've got to grab a hold of him and not let go. Satan wants you to let go. Satan wants you to doubt. Satan wants you to do that thing that you've been doing that's wrong and that you know it's wrong. He wants you to keep doing that. And he also wants you to think that it's okay, that God's going to be good with that. And that's not right. That's not what you need to do. You need to grab a hold of God. Grab a hold of Jesus. Don't let go. Remember that bulldog. And don't let go.
but keep on breathing because you've got to go through your life. You've got to live every day. You've got to keep on going. That's my lesson for today. I hope you got something out of it. But remember, keep on going. Don't let go. Don't do what Satan wants you to do. God bless and have a great day.